Before we get straight into the podcast, I just want to give a huge shout out to our sponsors, D Kirby GA Star. Declan Kirby GA Star Championship Journey. It's a series of GA team children's books written by primary school teacher and GA coach Michael Egan. You can check it out in the link in the description down below, of course, as well. Follow the trials and tribulations of Declan Kirby and his team at Smith Green Gaelic Football Club, recently formed a promising GA team. The book is now available in Easton's and all good bookshops, so check it out in the description down below and let's get straight into it. So the 2021 All-Stars have been confirmed for the All-Ireland Senior Hurling Championship, the 2021 All-Stars, the best 15 in the country after the conclusion of the All-Ireland Senior Hurling Championship. It's been confirmed, it was confirmed this morning and plenty of reaction, plenty of discussion, plenty of people discussing the All-Stars and um, yeah, a little bit controversial as well. No Cork players on the team, no Cork players. The first time in 50 years that a side that got to the All-Ireland Final didn't have a player that got into the All-Stars. Very, very controversial in my opinion. Um, and certainly we'll be breaking down some reactions, some tweets, and, and also discussing this myself along the way. I suppose, look, listen, first of all, let's get the team on the screen right away. Let's not waste any more time. So that's the team right there. Owen Murphy and goal of Kilkenny. Full-back line of Sean Finn, Connor Prunty, and Barry Nash. A half-back line of Jermot Burns, Declan Hannan, and Kyle Hayes. A midfield pairing of Willow Donoghue and Dara O'Donovan. A half forward line of Garod Hegarty, Keane Lynch and Tom Morrissey. And a full forward line of Tony Kelly, Shamie Flanagan and Peter Casey. Now if you'll remember I did do my own All-Stars when the All-Ireland Senior Hurling Championship concluded. And seven changes actually to this team. So certainly me and the GEA quite uh, disagree in terms of the All-Stars. In terms of who gets the All-Stars. Um, I, would, I would have two Cork players in there in my opinion. Um, I suppose running through the team and just running through what changes I'd make personally. So, look, Owen Murphy had a great year for Kilkenny. He made some big saves in that core game. But I am all in all surprised that he got this award. Like, he didn't really have any saves to make against Dublin, uh, you know, in the Leinster final. No real saves to make in that game from what I remember. In the semi-final as well against Wexford, like, he made one or two errors as well. Like, you remember going deep into into stoppage time he made one or two errors so he didn't make mistakes in that game so I'm a little bit surprised that he's got in there he did make a couple of big saves against Cork and that's fair enough but I would have had Nicky Quaid ahead of him I think I know Nicky Quaid some people would say is the safe option you know Limerick player and whatnot maybe you're going to add another Limerick player in here I mean in total I would have actually had 10 Limerick players um but you know there's somebody some Limerick players that are not in this team that I would have in the team ironically enough and I would have Nicky Quaid ahead of Owen Murphy in my opinion, in terms of the halfback line, and like in terms of Nicky Quaid as well, getting back to him quickly, like some of the saves he made against Waterford were brilliant. I know he made a mistake towards the end of the game, but that game was dead and buried by then. He made some big saves uh, in normal time. His puck outs against Cork were absolutely brilliant as well. So a little bit surprised by that. The halfback line, I'd make two changes to this as well. You have Sean Finn, Connor Prunty, and Barry Nash. I keep Sean Finn in there. No arguments with that whatsoever. I would have Dan Morrissey ahead of Connor Prunty. And I know someone pointed out when I did my own All Stars, and they said that Dan Morrissey only played two and a half games. He came on a half time in the match versus Tipperary. And look, that's fair enough. But Owen Murphy of Kilkenny, he only played three games, so he played an extra thirty-five minutes than uh, than Dan Morrissey, and he's won an All Star. So you know, I, I don't think you leave Dan Morrissey out on the basis. That he played 35 minutes less less you know if you're going to leave him out it would be on the basis that Connor Prunty was better than him in the championship and for me he wasn't I think Dan Morrissey was better he came on against Tipperary at half time and changed the game in many ways his defense was you know defensive output was it was brilliant in that game done a big job in shutting Tipperary out some of his catches and his man marking job versus Waterford were brilliant and it wasn't a coincidence that when Dan Morrissey came back into the team Limerick stepped it up a gear defensively and they were able to nullify a lot of the sides they were going up against you know the job on Patrick Horgan was brilliant Patrick Horgan was very very quiet you know in the final all things considered and that was partly down to Dan Morrissey so I think it's uh yeah bizarre that he's left out in my in my opinion I think it's criminal to leave him now I really really do I think it's such a poor decision uh, I understand Conor Prunty had a very good year for Waterford and he's been a brilliant hurler for Waterford in the last couple of years he was brilliant in that game against Galway and equally impressive against Tip but for me Dan Morrissey has to get has to get in there like he really really does no two question about it in my opinion um, he just has to get in there like he really does uh, number four Barry Nash 
Um, yeah, like I would have went with Niall O'Leary personally, and look, it's all opinions. Uh, I just think Niall O'Leary was was impressive for Cork. I, I liked what he's done when he got forward. Like fair enough, Barry Nash probably the better defender, the better number four, um, and maybe all in all probably had the better year. You could argue the case that Niall O'Leary struggled in the final, and maybe that's why he doesn't get in there. So it's fair enough. Like it is all opinions at the end of the day, but I would have had Niall O'Leary of Cork in there. Um, he was very impressive, I thought, against the Dubs. Um, in that qualifier game and I thought he had a very good semi-final against Kilkenny as well the halfback line I'd make no changes at all here Jeremy Burns Declan Han and Cole Hayes no changes whatsoever and in terms of uh, the midfield William O'Donoghue I'd keep him in there very very impressive season uh, but I would have Jamie Barron instead of uh, Dara O'Donovan Dara O'Donovan look you could have you know it's one of them things as well where for me when you're when you're making an all-star team I want to have it a little balanced. I don't want to have it, you know, 12 Limerick players or 13 Limerick players or whatever this team has because, you know, in my opinion, I just think it's a little, it, it kind of, it just makes the All-Stars look a little bit silly. You know, it was like when Dublin won 10 or 11 All-Stars, like, just balance it out a little bit. I understand maybe, like, because if you if you were literally going to look at the All-Stars and create the best 15 from start to finish from the All-Ireland Championship, and that was it, the best 15, you just put the whole team full of Limerick players. Do you know what I mean? You you just would because that they have been they've been the best fifteen, but you can't do that because it makes the All Stars look silly and it's also just very unfair on a lot of the other good players that have contributed throughout the uh, the All Ireland season. So like Darrell Donovan was brilliant for Limerick, but I do think Jamie Barron was better. Like he was very very good uh, in the game versus Galway. Uh, he came off the bench against Leash. Um, he had an injury uh, in, in uh, coming into that game, came off the bench and Waterford just about got over the line against Leash and I thought he made a big difference. That day, brilliant again against Galway, wonderful around midfield, hitting points from, from all angles, winning ball around there as well. Brilliant against Tip as well. Maybe struggled a little bit against Limerick, but for me, I think he gets in there. Half forward line was Groad, Hegarty, Keen Lynch and Tom Morrissey. Tom Morrissey and Keen Lynch, no arguments whatsoever. I would have Austin Gleeson ahead of Groat Hegarty, and I think this is another one, in my opinion, that's absolutely crazy because, like, Groat Hegarty was he was impressive for Limerick. He was very good at times. He had a very good final, but I think up until the final, I think Austin Gleeson was miles in front of him, uh, in my opinion. I think Austin Gleeson was outstanding for Waterford this year. Uh, he was so so impressive, brilliant in in the in the win over Tipperary. Made a huge difference in that game. Caught a lot of high balls, some brilliant points, goals along the way as well. So I think to leave Austin Gleeson out was very very odd, uh, in my opinion. I know some people would put him in around the full forward line. I had him at number ten personally, um, and we'll we'll get into why in just a moment. But I, yeah, I would have had Austin Gleeson in there. I think he he was better than Groat Hegarty in, in my opinion. The full forward line was Tony Kelly, Shamey Flanagan, and Peter Casey. I'd make two changes here. I'd actually have Aaron Glan ahead of Peter Casey. I think Aaron Glan, as soon as he came off the bench against Tip in that game as well, he made a huge difference uh, in that game. He was absolutely fantastic. I know you could make you could argue the case he could have been sent off, and a little bit of controversy sometimes follows Aaron Glan. But for me, in terms of his ability and in terms of what he'd done on the pitch, I would have had Aaron Glan in there. Shamey Flanagan, no arguments whatsoever, was outstanding, potentially a contender for Hurler of the Year, in my opinion. And look, Tony Kelly is one of the best hurlers in the country, make no mistake about it. I, I am surprised that Tony Kelly gets in, though, you know. Knocked out in the second round of the qualifiers, and he gets in at number 13. Like, a little bit surprising, in all honesty. I know he was brilliant in a lot of the games he played, and some of the points he scores and, and goals he gets are unrecognisable at times he's you know by far probably one of the best hurlers in the country but I would have had Patrick Horgan in there I just think Patrick Horgan was better in the basis of 2021 his game in the semi-final against Kilkenny was outstanding hit a whole host of points from play in the first half I think his first half performance was one of the best individual first half performances I've seen from a core player in god knows how long and Look, he wasn't as effective in the final, but that was because you had, as I said, Dan Morrissey. Like, and I think he should have gotten the side as well. So, I think Patrick Horgan should have got in there. In my opinion, not only do I think he should have got in there, but I think he should have been contender for hurler of the year. I think he was in the top three. Um, so yeah, just a little bit bizarre that he doesn't uh, he doesn't get in there. So I would have had him at thirteen. Um, I know he normally plays a fourteen or in at number ten, but or in at number eleven. But I would have had him at thirteen here, in my opinion. 
Um, but yeah, you look, it, it, you know, it's all opinions at the end of the day. We all disagree with one another, but it is quite bizarre not to uh, not to have a Cork player. So we'll get some tweets on the screen here. First of all, from Des Cattle, he says, the other big talking point in the Hurling All-Stars team for 2021 is that Cork, beaten in the All-Ireland Final, have no player named. It's the first time in the 50-year history of the event that beaten All-Ireland finalists were ignored in either code. And Brian Wheelahan says, getting to an All-Ireland final and your team not getting an All-Star award isn't right. What's next? The player of the year not getting one either. Yeah, I mean, and that probably, you know, sums it up in... Uh, in some ways as well you know you could you could argue the case that Patrick Horgan was in the top three for hurler of the year and he, he doesn't even get in the question personally I would have had Dan Morrissey in the conversation as well I know a lot of people would say well Dan Morrissey only played two and a half games and look fair enough that you know everyone kind of judges their own all-stars in, in different ways for me doesn't necessarily you don't have to have played a certain amount of games in my opinion to have gotten an all-star I think it's about what you've done on the pitch and I think it depends on on how on whether you were better than than some of the other players. Look, I'd understand if you play one game. Fair enough. If you play just one game, then okay. But I think if you you play two or three games and you're involved in something successful for your county, um, I think you should get in there. It's one of the reasons why I think Colin McShane should win an All Star for Tyrone, but I don't think he will. Um, but that's a question for another day. And as Des Cahill says, first time in, in fifty years that a side beaten in the All Ireland final doesn't even make doesn't even get an All Star. Um crazy, crazy stuff in my opinion. And I, I'm sure like Cork players will be watching that, uh, Cork fans as well, and that'll light a fire under their belly a little bit because a little bit of disrespect there I think to, to leave a Cork player out in my opinion. I think Patrick Horgan surely was nailed on. Surely, like surely he has to get in there. You know, come on like you know it's absolutely crazy um and Noel O'Leary like I said before um that you know that, that that's opinions I would have had him in there you know um some people might have thinking maybe Robert Downey could have got in at number three Jack O'Connor had a sensational year for Cork and, and maybe some would argue the case that you could put him in there as well but um you know personally I probably would have actually had Jack O'Connor ahead of Peter Casey but look it is all opinions it's all um you know it is sport at the end of the day and that's what makes sport so exciting and so entertaining and so fun to speak about because we could all disagree with each other and we can all have uh, separate opinions and no one person is right at the end of the day but you would look at this all-star team of the year the official all-star team of the year and you would think ah, it's just yeah it's just a little bit off uh, in my opinion but look that's my opinion we'll wrap this up here anyway let me know down in the comments below what's your opinion on the uh, all-star team of the year let me know down in the description or let me know in the comments down below um, what you thought of the video leave a like and subscribe if you could if you haven't subscribed already i would kindly appreciate it i recorded it i recorded i'm really messing up my words here today i recorded a uh, a live preview of this weekend's club action so make sure to check that out as well that will be up already on the channel and there will be a season preview out tomorrow discussing the Donegal senior footballers ahead of 2022 we'll be breaking down the Donegal footballers discussing them in further detail so make sure you check that out my name is Aaron anyways and I'll see you all in the next one